Have you ever looked at old baseball cards and noticed that each player had a custom bat that was made for them? These three batters were photographed around 1887 or 1888 and each of them has a different style bat for a different style of play. Unlike the custom bats made today where there's a weight, length, and diameter requirement, bats in the mid to late 1800s were tailored to the individual player. Baseball players would make their own bats into the size and shape that worked for them. This could include bats with a flat edge, round bats, short bats, long bats, at whatever weight they wanted. When it became obvious that hitters had a huge advantage against pitchers, rules started to be put in place. In 1869, the length limit was set to a maximum of 42 inches, which is still the rule today. This is a photo from Snyder's 1875 catalog, where you can see that while baseball bats were becoming more regulated, the handle, the diameter of the wood, the wood materials, and the top of the bat were still very different to cater to the individual. Then a famous story happens in 1884, where John Hillerick, a woodworker for his father, took a break to go watch the Louisville Eclipse, which at the time was a professional team that was part of the American Association. During the game, a player named Pete Browning broke his bat and was outwardly frustrated. So John got the idea to ask Pete if he wanted to go to his father's woodworking shop so that they could make him a customized bat. They selected the material white ash, and with Browning's instructions, John made the bat. The next day, Browning used that bat and went three for three. So then, of course, everyone else wanted a bat just like him, thus the Louisville Slugger Company was born. But don't get me wrong, there's other bats out there. For example, the Spalding Company came out with the Mushroom Bat, which was supposed to help the weight distribution. There was also the Elijah Way Bat that was popularized by Napoleon. No, not that guy. This bat was designed to have one finger placed below the bat knob so that you could have better control. It was made around 1904 from white ash. There was also the ridiculous banana bat that was patented in 1890. However, there were firm restrictions about using these type of bats by the turn of the century. Worth noting, in 2001, Barry Bonds actually repopularized maple bats. Also, since 2006, we have the Pro XR design. That knob is supposed to be better in your hands when you swing through the zone. So if you still could customize your bat, what would it look like? I'm going with lightsaber.